have fun and beat the heat without breaking the bank. We're diving into summer fun, plus hurricane info, what all residents need to know this time of year, and Wellington Citizens Action Center, upgraded and only a few clicks away. It's all coming up on Wellington in the Know. and thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Andrea DeFonti. It's a place where you can report code violations, potholes, you name it, and it's called the Citizens Action Center. Log in and you have the ability to ask questions, make requests, and get fast responses without having to rely on email. A lot of people probably have used eBetterPlace and don't even know it, because basically from our website, if you send in a note, you're using eBetterPlace, which just enables us to log information that's coming in and route it to the appropriate department. So with WebQA, which is taking place of eBetterPlace, it improves that function a hundredfold. Not only does it give the ability to send in a note and a request, a question, a pothole, or I need my light fixed or anything like that, and it routes it to the appropriate department. It also has a lot of other functions, including like a knowledge base, or you can ask a question and you can find out answers to those questions in one simple and easy to use place. So residents will be able to go out and find answers to questions other residents are asking or, or information that we think that a lot of people need to know. It's kind of one centralized place to, to find out the information. On the back end for us, it, it works a lot better with our departments, a lot easier for our departments to use, so they'll be able to communicate with the residents a whole lot better and, and a whole lot easier and it, and it integrates with some of our other systems. The next phase will be, uh, you know, with the, the smartphones becoming more and more popular is there's an app for that and there's an app for WebQA so if a resident happens to be walking down the street and they notice a crack in the sidewalk or they notice a street light being out or or a pothole or or water gushing you know they can take a picture and they can open up the app and send that information directly into the city so that we know exactly where that pothole is and we see a picture of the pothole or the gushing water or the cracked sidewalk and, and we can send crews out to fix it immediately. And so they don't have to try to remember, they don't have to try to get somebody on the phone, they can do it really quick with their smartphone, send the information in, it's logged, it uses the GPS, like I said, so it knows exactly where it's at. It's just another quick and easy way for residents to communicate any issue that they might be having uh, with the city. To try it out for yourself, visit wellingtonfl.gov, go to eServices, and click Citizens Action Center. It's that time of year when the water's just right. And whether it's swim or dive lessons for the kids or programming for adults, we've got you covered. We're at the Wellington Aquatics Complex, and I am joined by Wellington's Aquatics Supervisor, Eric Juckett, and I also have Junior Lifeguards with us. Junior Lifeguards are in the house. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, Eric, can you tell us a little bit about this facility? I know that it was uh, renovated recently. Wellington really did a great job in renovating this facility. Um, it's an Olympic-sized swimming pool that caters to everybody. It offers uh, swim meets here, as well as multiple programming such as swim lessons, dive, dive team, swim team, things of that nature. Yeah, so what, I know we, the junior lifeguards talk about swim team, dive team. What else do we have here for kids? We offer a junior lifeguard program, which you see here, which teaches kids how to become lifeguards without certifying them. We have lifeguard courses, uh, dive team, swim team, swim and dive, uh, things of that nature. Yeah, and you also have, uh, I know you have a lot of swimming lessons. Can you tell us about your swimming lessons too? Yeah, our swimming lessons are very affordable. It's $55 for a two-week session. That gives you eight half-hour lessons. And we offer it from kids six months to senior citizens. Okay, speaking of adults, what kind of adult programming is going on over here? We have, we have water aerobics, which is a great way to work out. Uh, it's $4 a class. We have a um, master's program, which allows adults to come in and swim before they go to work to get their workout in. And we also offer adult swim lessons, which is great for adults who don't know how to swim, as well as adults who know how to swim, they just want to become better swimmers. All right, thank you, Eric. And it's, it's getting hot out there, so it's time to cool off. 
Let's take a look at the summer pool hours for the month of July. Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sundays, 12 noon to 5 p.m. Admission is free for ages 2 and under, $3 for kids 3 to 17, $5 for adults 18 to 54, and $2 for ages 55 and up. If you don't take the right precautions, the summer heat could spell danger. Coming up, Heat Illnesses 101 and what to do to protect yourself. Plus, hurricane info you can't afford to miss. What Wellington can do for you if there's a storm. And a big fireworks display here in your great hometown. We'll be right back. Though uh, some of the other horrible events of our history, like Pearl Harbor, are now consigned to the past, this is not part of our history yet. I want to thank the city of Wellington for remembering in such a beautiful and very, very powerful way. Check out these fireworks. It's all part of Wellington's Independence Day celebration. Join us July 4th at Village Park from 6 to 9.30 p.m. Enjoy traditional games, bingo, live music, and more. And don't forget our free movie nights. Select Fridays all summer long. Drop by the amphitheater this month for Independence Day. Diary of a Wimpy Kid 2, Roderick Rules. What Happens in Vegas. Rio and Fantastic Mr. Fox. All movies start at 8.30 p.m., so bring a lawn chair and blanket and enjoy the show. Now it's hurricane season, and while you and your family need to prepare, the same goes for Wellington. We talked to City Manager Paul Schofield to find out what all residents need to know. From the moment that we, are, we receive warning that a storm is coming, we will begin to prepare. We will do simple things at first, like just make sure that debris is picked up, that construction sites have their materials stored. We'll make sure that the streets are marked. We'll get generators out so that traffic lights can be run immediately after the storm. We'll provide information on where there are shelters. We'll provide information on where you can receive emergency services. If you need food, if you need tarps, we'll be able to help with that. If the phones are working, call us. If they are not, stop us on the street. We are here to provide the services that you need. Whenever a storm approaches, be sure to check for updates at wellingtonfl.gov. The temperatures outside are through the roof. So what can you do to prevent heat illness? Let's take a moment to find out. We're at Fire Station 25 right off of Wellington Trace and we are joined by Battalion Chief Nigel Baker, the big dog in charge of keeping all of us safe. Thank you for joining us, Nigel. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Heat illnesses is a huge concern this time of year. What sort of symptoms can people look for? That's a good question. This time of year in Florida, you know, we've got temperatures 90, 95 degrees, sometimes 100 degrees on certain days with the relative humidity is really high. So some of the things that concern everybody here in Palm Beach County, and especially in Wellington, is staying hydrated. Um, some of the symptoms you can look for is, in fact, if you stop sweating. That's the biggest problem. Uh, and because you're heading towards heat exhaustion if you stop sweating. But um, really, most people drink when they're thirsty, and if you're waiting to get hydrated when you're thirsty, then you're already behind the eight ball. You really should drink all day long, several pints, several, you know, and uh, not a gallon of, of water per day. Okay, what else besides drinking should you do when it's hot out to protect yourself? Well, first things first, uh, you should wear some sunscreen or some type of covering. Obviously, we don't expect people to be out there all day in long sleeve shirts mm -hmm. or jackets, but uh, some loose fitting cotton clothing is always good and that keeps your temperature low. Uh, try not to wear too many dark colors because that's going to absorb a lot of the heat. So those are the things that we recommend people do. Our firefighters, every morning we re remind them, whether it's via email or via our intranet website, to, to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate all day long. You know, and we, we tell our firefighters, you know, one of the ways you can tell that you're not hydrated enough is that uh, 
if your urine, for example, is too dark, then you're not hydrated enough, it should run clear. And if you're doing that, then you're hydrating enough. You know, we get brush fires uh, this time of the year all the time, and that's one of the biggest things that sends firefighters to the hospital is, uh, is heat-related stress, uh, heat exhaustion, or heat stroke. Okay, and speaking of brush fires, there is a very extreme drought that all of us are concerned about, especially with um, any issues with fires. What do our residents, our homeowners, need to know to keep themselves safe? Well, one of the things that's a concern here in Wellington is that not all the areas of Wellington have hydrants. That's number one. So we use other um, sources of water to fight fires in the Paddock Park area, for example, or down there off of Appaloosa in that area, in the equestrian area. There's not hydrants on every corner like there are in other areas of Wellington. So we encourage people to make sure if you have a lake or if there's a canal that runs behind your house, make sure it's free of any debris cut back all the brush so that if we have to send a truck back there to try to draft water out of the canal, if there's water in it, uh, then we can get to it readily. That's the number one thing. Second thing we want people to do is make sure that around their homes they have what we call defensible space. And what that means is exactly that. It's an area 30 feet around your home um, that you can create a defensible space or a defensible area that we can put trucks between the wildland in a face or the grassy area and your home so we can put trucks in between the two so we can fight fires should they occur in your neighbor's yard or in a wilderness or a wildland environment. Can I say one other thing? Sure. Um, just when it comes to heat related illnesses, uh, I mentioned at the outset that uh, if you stop sweating that's the, the worst heat illness you can have. So um, the, what we do, what, how we treat people is we try to cool them off as soon as possible. If you're, if you're at a ball field, if you're out exercising with somebody and this occurs where they stop sweating, cool them off as soon as possible. You don't have to put freezing cold ice water on them, but put them in a shady area, give them plenty to drink, elevate their legs because usually your blood pressure is low. You know, things like that we want people to do so that uh, the, the illness doesn't progress to the point of death. Uh, some of the things that can occur with heat illnesses is people first start getting a headache and that's due to dehydration. They get dehydrated, you know, a lot of water is pulled from, you know, the brain and it, you begin to start to get a headache and then some people get dizzy. Um, initially people sweat a lot and then that tapers off when you start getting dehydrated. Uh, after they sweat a lot and it, it tapers off, another thing that could occur is a person might have a seizure or start shaking. And, and one of the telltale signs also of, of dehydration is your hands start to cramp up or they start to turn in, all right? When you see that happening on a ball field, it's usually an electrolyte imbalance or somebody that's dehydrated. So they start what we call uh, decerebrate or decorticate movements. They start turning their hands or their feet even start turning in and they start cramping. Another symptom would be they start vomiting, okay? Because what the body's doing is trying to shunt as much water as it can to the core of your body so it gets rid of food and everything else that's in you. So those are some of the things that happen. Uh, if, if that continues to occur and it continues to progress, then a person may have a seizure. Uh, they may start shaking, uh, a full uh, seizure they may, might occur, and then they may become unconscious. So any of these things that start to progress, and it simply starts with, you know, just being thirsty. If you can stop it there, then you'll stop all these other symptoms from occurring. But if it just continues, you can uh, be dehydrated, you can have heat illnesses to the point of death. Especially concerns for, I'm guessing, seniors, for children, anyone who's working outdoors. Important things for them to know. So we appreciate your sound advice. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. And we'll head back to the studio. Keeping those safety tips in mind, let's take a look at our senior activities. Try your luck at Bocce, free of charge, 9 to 11 a.m. July 12th and 26th at the Bocce Courts, next to the tennis facility at the Wellington Community Center. Now for brunch and bingo, 12.30 to 3 p.m. July 13th at the Wellington Community Center. Brunch and bingo will cost you six bucks and bingo by itself is two dollars. Coming up, protect your pump. What you need to do during the drought to protect your irrigation system. And a decade after 9-11, Wellington is honoring the victims. We'll be right back. 